The Berkshire Hathaway meeting gives Omaha an annual economic boost. Maureen Coffin reports that the local businesses and city officials love the idea of bringing 27,000 plus to Omaha each year. The CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, is constantly generating revenue to improve the city of Omaha. Thousands have gathered from all over the world to attend the Berkshire Hathaway Annual Shareholders Meeting. The event not only draws attention to Omaha, but it also provides economic support to our ever-growing community. The company's primary source of business is through insurance and casualty risks. GEICO is one of the several subsidiaries owned by Berkshire Hathaway. As a whole, GEICO has 7.4 million auto policyholders and is still growing. Berkshire Hathaway is also involved with the manufacture and distribution of furniture. Nebraska Furniture Mart is a billion dollar industry. From the standpoint of the impact on our hotels, our restaurants, Warsheim's or Nebraska Furniture Mart, and of course, Grotz. So, you know, you, that dollars that are spent by those visitors, uh, it has tremendous impact. It's, uh, uh, again, uh, a wonderful thing for the community. The company even has ties with candy. Seize Candies has over 200 shops across the nation due to Buffett's hands-off policy. The hands-off policy derives from the philosophy of acquiring solid companies. This belief has transformed Berkshire Hathaway into 47th in the world in gross domestic product. They spend a lot of money here. I mean, they're, they'll, they'll spend a huge amount of Borsheims in the Nebraska Furniture Mart. Uh, they'll stop at all the restaurants and shops here in town. Uh, and it's a huge boon to our economy. And there was this, this genuine excitement about, boy, we're going to get to see Warren Buffett. We're going to be able to see what Omaha is like. Most of them had never been here before, so they're kind of curious about what it was all about. The four-day event also takes a toll on the transportation industry. Every time Berkshire comes every year, we book a, quite a bit more money than we do other times of the year. Holding strong with a gain of $16.9 billion, it's clear how the company has flourished. From the Omaha Quest Center, I'm Maureen Kaufman. Local businesses receive a significant boost twice a year in Omaha, one from the shareholders meeting and another from the College World Series. Our guest today is Dr. Dave Volkman. He is Cloud Finance Professor and Associate Professor and Chair of the Department of Finance, Banking and Law at the University of Nebraska Omaha. His research interests include capital budgeting, behavioral finance, equity pricing and portfolio management. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Volkman. Thank you for inviting me. Obviously, Berkshire is a world-renowned company. Uh, what has made them so successful? Uh, well, Berkshire's success lies strictly with Warren Buffett. Uh, Warren has been an exceptional money manager for the past 40 years uh, with Berkshire. Um, Warren started taking over Berkshire from a partnership he formed uh, of uh, money managers, are actually investors, back in 62 and uh, finished taking over Berkshire in uh, 1965. Interesting. How does his investment style differ from his counterparts? Uh, Warren is, is what I would call a GARP investor, growth at a reasonable price. Uh, what Warren does is he takes uh, a value approach to investing. He looks for companies that are underpriced, but doesn't simply invest in those companies because they're underpriced. He, he looks for also some growth potential in the company. Uh, I believe what Warren has done is he's taken some of the uh, training he received from Benjamin Graham, his mentor at Columbia University, combined it with uh, uh, another investor that uh, looks a lot at growth, uh, Phil Fisher. Combine those two philosophies together to come up with a philosophy of looking for companies that are undervalued, but then also have the growth potential uh, to add to that company and then simply invest in it, stays in that company, rides that company up uh, without stepping in and out uh, one day or the next. He's definitely not a trader. He's a long-term investor. Now, Buffett has been accused recently of being uh, kind of conservative w when acquiring companies, and he responded to that by saying that he's never changed his business model. Uh, how would you react to that? I, I would agree with Warren. He's always been very conservative uh, in his investment styles. Again. Uh, Going back to when he was first investing it, uh, he, um, he looked at undervalued companies. In fact, again, picked up some of Benjamin Graham's uh, philosophy in which uh, you look at companies that are trading under their book value. One problem that um, Warren has is the company is just getting large. Anytime you get a company as, as big as, as Berkshire and you're looking to buy other stock, buy other companies, um, 
you're going to have to buy a big chunk of that company in order to, to boost it. And so uh, Berkshire's actually shifted some of their philosophy over the last 10 years now to uh, from buying up companies and investing for the long term to now looking for family owned companies where they can go in and take over the whole company uh, for a one shot price. Uh, and then invest in that company. And actually that's, that's worked out well for both the companies and Berkshire. Uh, these companies, the family owned companies, they don't want the company split up. Uh, if uh, a takeover uh, company comes in and takes over another company, splits them up and sells it off, that's what the family owned companies don't want. They want somebody like Berkshire Hathaway come in, say angel funding or something, come in, take over the company, buy out the company, but then keep it in place so the employees, the family members, all the customers, it stays in that community. Uh, that's what they want, so they're willing to sell it to Berkshire probably at a discounted price. And Warren's happy to buy the companies at a discount mm -hmm. price as long as there's good management behind it. It's interesting. Tell us a little bit about some of Berkshire Hathaway's primary revenue sources. Uh, well, the, the primary revenue source is the insurance right. uh, companies. Uh, 80, approximately 80 to 83 percent of the revenue for Berkshire Hathaway comes from insurance. He began buying insurance companies back in 1967. Uh, there was an insurance company that um, was close to bankruptcy. Its stock price was very low. It was only two dollars a share. Uh, people were writing the company off as being bankrupt and uh, Warren bought the company, uh, turned the company around, has grown, and now Geico is probably the second uh, strongest insurance company out there and a huge insurance company and a big source of revenue for uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Well, we're running out of time quickly. Uh, could you tell us, you know, Warren is looking to step down. What type of person are they looking to bring in for the company to progress in the future? Uh, it'll have to be uh, uh, somebody that's not just a money manager but well-rounded, understands not only managing portfolio funds but being able to go in, look at companies, identify value within a company. The doors to the Quest Center opened at 7, but the annual meeting movie didn't start until 8.30. Heidi Sampier reports on how shareholders spent their time waiting for the main event. <laughs> Forecasts were calling for rain, and the threat of severe weather lingered in the minds of those who organized the convention. Despite the bad weather, over 20,000 people were expected to show up for the annual Berkshire at Hathaway meeting today at the Quest Center. We knew when we, when we pulled in here this morning about 6 o'clock in the morning with all the long lines on the outside that, that weather doesn't keep uh, Berkshire Hathaway shareholders away from this meeting. Once inside, shareholders dance their ways from booth to booth, displaying capitalism at its finest. Each shareholder found a favorite within the arena. Mostly the underwear. I got a golf product, and underwear products, and CD products. Everything. Well, Geico would be one of them. A fruit of the loom for me. National Indemnity Company. I do like the Dairy Queen. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Some even found a place to relax. Those who were running around or resting were most likely to be found in the seemingly endless line for commemorative stamps. This is a limited edition stamp, so I figured I might as well get them this year with limited. I, I've been coming to these meetings for about the last 10 years, so I pretty much just collect everything I can. The booth from Texas, as well as a few others, had more than just merchandise to promote their products. We're here with Justin Boots, and we just have our Longhorn Steers from Texas on display for the shareholders to see. I didn't realize so many people up here have never seen Longhorn Steers. I grew up in Texas, so everybody has one in their backyard. Then the guys from the commercials are here. The Fruit of the Loom fruit is here, so that's really cool. From the Quest Center Arena in Omaha, Nebraska, I'm Heidi Sampier. There was one booth at the convention center that wasn't able to have its product on display, not because they didn't want to show it off, it was just too big. NetJets is a private aviation company that sells fractional airplanes. Their jets come equipped with leather seats, tablecloths, couches, and multiple TVs. Vice President Don Seidholt says that this kind of flying can pay big dividends for those who want to fly We take care style. of everything, we manage the aircraft. Uh, we train the pilots, we make sure the aircraft's maintained. Uh, it's a perfect system for somebody that doesn't want to buy a whole airplane. The minimum cost for one of these planes is one sixteenth the value, which gets you 50 hours per year and runs just over $400,000.
NetJets offers more than 370,000 flights annually and travels to more than 150 countries across the world. Berkshire's annual shareholders meeting treats thousands of worldwide investors to an experience that will last a lifetime. But Ryan Kronschnabel reports that one group of travelers didn't come to voice their support. Over 27,000 people showed up to the 2007 Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting, a record number. Not everybody here at the Berkshire meeting is happy. The Croc tribe of California, a tribe known for salmon fishing on the Klamath River, has taken issue with dams owned by Pacific Corps, a Berkshire Hathaway company. Those dams are killing our fish, they're killing our culture, they're polluting our river. The tribe is concerned that if the dams are relicensed, there will be no more salmon in 40 years. At one point, there's over a million salmon returning to the Klamath River. And at this point right now, there's less than 5% of that total. And it's killing our people. It's a way of life. They also say Pacific Corps will save millions of dollars if they buy electricity from other companies instead of maintaining the dams. The dams produce enough electricity to power 70,000 homes, which is only 2% of Pacific Corps' energy output. From Quest Center Omaha, I'm Ryan Kronschnabel. During the meetings, Buffett said the issue is being studied by federal regulators. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to talk to one of the richest men in the world? Well, Anthony Blue talked with four UNO students that spent a day with the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett. On February 19th, 38 students from the College of Business Administration spent a day with Warren Buffett, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. I'm here with four of those students to find out what it was like to talk with the Oracle of Omaha. And their names are Destiny Jenkins, Kosha Edis, Kate Clark, and Michael Asmus. So what was it like to talk with one of the richest men in the world? Destiny and I walked into the room together and he was standing just inside the door <laughs> and we both just kind of stopped and caught our breath. Like, we didn't expect him to just be so accessible. I think that's the right word. Accessible. Yeah. I mean, it was a wonderful experience. I learned a lot from him. I think I was just in awe being in that presence. So was he out there like shaking hands or was he kind of the greeter of the event? His mingling is like he was hosting a house party. I mean, very personable, uh, willing to sign autographs or just ask personal questions. Um, as you mentioned, we had students who um, actually came in from different states and different other, other schools to uh, sit with him as well. And so he just really wanted to learn more about their school and why they had come to see him. I just, I've never met him, but I've read books about him and seen him on TV. And it was just, uh, I didn't know what to expect. And it was just an amazing experience to see that, you know, he was a real man and <laughs> he didn't have supernatural powers. <laughs> and he was just down to earth. A uh, humble guy that knows business. I can imagine being in awe of such a situation. I mean, it's Warren Buffett. You hear about him in financial magazines. You hear about him in the paper. I've never seen his car personally. Like, I've lived in <laughs> Omaha for a while, okay? I've never seen him drive around. Um, I've never seen his house. But I know he has a large impact on not just the community of Omaha, but also America. And so, in knowing this and able to be with him for the morning and also for lunch, I mean, what really stood out about his personality, about his character? I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is humor. He was humorous. He was very down to earth. You would expect a guy that's in like the upper echelon of the world with financial success to be kind of maybe not so humble, but he came across very humble, I thought. So He's still very much an Omahaan. Um, it was like it was like talking to many people that I know in Omaha. It, you you get into a comfort level with his conversation style and his the the stories he told. It it seemed like I had known him longer than just a few minutes. I can only echo what's already been said. Uh, I think humility spoke out the most to me. Um, just like how you were saying, if you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't know that he was you know, one of the richest men in the world. Um, I think also what was really great was his willingness to teach us, you know, not the formal teaching in a setting, but just listen to my experiences, this is what I've done. Um, and you can accomplish, you know, maybe not the same thing unless you really want to. So it's kind of putting that onus back on you, but through his life experience, I think he was really trying to teach us something that day. 
I think that was probably one of the most interesting things is we really didn't focus on, I would say, financial concepts. We focused more on um, life attributes, leadership qualities. He probably spent, I would say, 75% of the time kind of touching on many of those things. So, so in a few words, how would you summarize what being with him during this day was like? I thought it was historic um, because it, it, it was really a once in a lifetime experience. Long lines, crowded airplanes, and hotels welcomed shareholders to Omaha. But a family atmosphere greeted shareholders during a reception at Borsheim's to kick off the Berkshire Hathaway weekend. The lengthy lines for foods and drinks were a trend throughout the weekend, and some came more prepared than others. But the excitement of the weekend more than made up for any lost waiting. Akash, a business student from the University of Utah, said the reception is nice, but what he's really anxious for is just around the corner. I mean, the real stuff is tomorrow, and I'm, I'm most curious to see what questions are posed to him and how he answers it and, you know, all those things. So it'll be interesting. The Friday night reception wasn't the only event at Borsh Arms. Shareholders had the opportunity to return on Sunday just in case they missed the merchandise. Don Coolidge reports that diamonds proved to be the one main attraction, but not the only one. Berkshire Hathaway attracted shareholders from all over the globe. We live in Tokyo, it's a long way away, but I can't tell you how many miles they're out there, you know, check the frequent fire. We're from Florida. I'm from Portland, Oregon, and my uncle invited me out this weekend, thought it would be a good experience to come and, and see the adventure of Berkeyville. Florida. Blue and from Florida. Yeah. An event that included ping pong, magic tricks, and of course, the jewelry at Borsheim's. 28,000. The icing on the cake is to be able to come here and have this glorious jewelry that they bought in from all over the United States. Before I left today, I thought I'd come and find some good jewelry. The shareholders' experience is varied. We've been to several of the meetings a couple of years ago and a couple of years before that, so that we just see it get bigger and bigger, wilder and wilder. Listening to Warren and Charlie just be just be very open with all the shareholders has been a great experience. It's fun meeting some of the people that are here. It's from people from all different walks of life. Entertainment included Warren Buffett and Bill Gates taking on a single match and of course a double match of ping pong. We as the general public always hold the the rich and famous in a very high esteem matter and to see them just do something normal that we would do every day was really great to see. The remaining focus was the icing at Borsheim's. Shareholders browsed, sampled, and of course purchased the jewelry. So many people, so many people. Everywhere we went, shareholders everywhere. From Borsheim's in Omaha, Nebraska, I'm Don Coolidge. Borsheim's was one of the hot spots for the weekend, but it wasn't the only company shareholders won't soon forget. Dairy Queen was another Berkshire company visible throughout the weekend. Shareholders flocked to the 114th and Dodge location to meet their favorite authors who have published books about Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. They also took time out to satisfy their sweet tooth. This Dairy Queen is a reflection of Berkshire's tradition to purchase family-owned companies. My father built this in 1963 when it was just a cobblestone street out here. And then um, I bought it in 1972. The event has grown over the years thanks to word of mouth. It's not really even on the official agenda. Um, it really took off after Warren Buffett made appearances here. The Oracle of Omaha didn't attend the festivities, but the authors were more than willing to share their insight. Um, he has that Midwestern folksiness about him, and I think that's very endearing to shareholders to uh, listen to somebody who's telling them a truth in a very uh, colorful way. They understand the psychology of the people involved in, in the markets and as a consequence are extraordinarily successful. Authors and shareholders alike agree that this weekend is truly one of a kind. So I went around and looked at the shareholder meetings of about 50 or 60 different companies in the, Austra in the United States, Australia and the UK over the last five years and what I found was that this is indeed the gold standard. You know, it's terrific for the whole city of Omaha. I mean, 
for everyone involved, what he does for the city, what what Berkshire does as far as the uplift, and then it lasts throughout the whole year. You know, it's amazing. The author's books sold out in minutes, but they were quick to pay homage to one of the leading business innovators in the country. This is just uh, one big, uh, wonderful uh, weekend. It's like making the pilgrimage, and all the faithful are here to, uh, to meet their Messiah. The event concluded the opening night of the weekend. Around 450 free ice cream cones were given out to the shareholders as part of the book signing. A Berkshire Hathaway weekend wouldn't be complete without ending at the family-owned Gorat Steakhouse. You had to make reservations early to attend dinner at Warren Buffett's favorite restaurant. Hundreds of shareholders, big and small, waited for their turn just to take a seat. Once at the table, diners enjoyed a good meal and the time to relax and reflect on their weekend away. I heard about the great steak, Gorats, spend time with some good friends, and see, see Nebraska. Diners left with full bellies and the chance to purchase another keepsake. The dinner at Gorats completed the Berkshire Hathaway weekend. Many have called it an experience of a lifetime. One experience shareholders won't forget is watching Buffett stroll through the convention hall. Before the movie, Buffett got a chance to audition for a career after Berkshire, a site that highlighted the weekend. As some of you know, we're looking for a new investment officer at Berkshire. And that may mean that I'll be unemployed fairly soon, so I've been casting around for a different activity. Watch first on American 